Hey everyone, it's Cole from A Plus Power Sports. Today I'm going to show you how to properly break in your player sportsman. If you're looking for a break in procedure on your brand new sportsman, you most likely just purchased it. So I'm going to give you guys a quick once over on it just so you can see some tips and tricks and how to operate your machine safely. To start with, um, and I can't stress this enough coming from the service side, is make sure we have good Polaris drive belts on them. If we have to replace them, we're taking good proper care of our Polaris PVT clutches along with shifting when you need to. So you can only shift when you're at a complete stop on the Polaris models. A high and low gear are your two forward gears. High gear is if we're going to go above 15 miles an hour is what I'm going to say most of the time. So if you're trail riding, um, driving around the yard at a fast pace, keep it up in high gear. If you need to shift down into low gear, if you're going to go under 15, like you're just spraying weeds around the yard, uh, maybe you're loading it up onto a trailer or going through a deep mud hole, uh, we're going to keep it down in low gear. They want to have those higher RPMs for the clutches to properly work and keep a long life of longevity in the drive belt system. Looking at our right hand foot well here, this little brake pedal here is your foot brake. This operates to rear tires only. Your handbrake up on the top left hand handlebar there operates all four wheels and tires. Down in this little cubby here, you pull this little tab, pop this open and it removes our cover. You're able to get to your engine oil dipstick there. So it's actually a thread on style. So make sure if you're checking your engine oil, you thread it all the way in and thread it all the way back out before you get an accurate reading. Um, you'll notice on the back side of this, there is some heat reflective foil. This is to keep your legs from getting warm because your engine is right underneath the seat on this one. At the front of the vehicle, when we lift up our front storage box, we're able to easily access our battery on this one. So if you have a battery tender, there is a port already installed right from the factory. You don't need to worry about installing that. We'll show you later on there. Um, but your battery is held in with 240 Torx, which will remove this front bar here, and you're able to pop the battery out. Um, your ECU is here. Um, don't disconnect it or spray water around this area. It is waterproof, but I do not recommend spraying uh, pressurized water through here. You'll find your diagnostic plug for the technicians to run diagnostic codes on. Make sure it's always plugged into its cap. Underneath this front storage clip, you pull that out by just pulling up on it. You're able to get to your fuse box. When we remove our fuse box, you pull on the two tabs and you can easily see that there is writing to let you know what fuse is for what electrical component. Quickly pop that back on here and it is a water and dust proof gasket on there but still I don't recommend spraying high pressurized water in there. Um, underneath this little storage compartment here you can pop up easily removes there you're able to get to your radiator cap so if you're really down on coolant and you needed to fill it you'll remove the cap and get to your radiator. Underneath the front storage box here there's multiple little rubber plugs like this. So if you get water trapped in there, or you're washing it and you need it to drain quickly, you pull those and remove them uh, to let the water out. The sportsman seats are easily removable. You pull up on the rear and you pull back on the front. There are two tabs that is locking into the front part of the seat, along with two little darts in the back that are going into some rubber plungers. Um, so there's no levers to remove it. You just pull up on it firmly. Important on the service standpoint side of it is getting to our air filter. So you have six little clips here. You just push these to pop them off, um, but take your cover off, keep up with your air filters. I always recommend the Polaris air filter, um, but it is a paper style filter. So if you do get water into, or if you do ingest water somehow, make sure you replace your filter quickly, but make sure you keep up with that. I see a lot of engines get damaged if you do not have a proper air filter installed or you don't keep up with air filter maintenance. Um, once we get this removed here, we're able to see our filter along with our rear brake fluid reservoir along with our engine oil fill. So you just remove this little cover right here. You have a little bit of a longer funnel you can get in there. You'll fill your engine with oil from the top here. You don't fill it from the dipstick. Um, your spark plug, you can get to it. It's right on the top there on the top of the engine. This is an SP model, um, so you're going to get the rear bag, or excuse me, the trail model, so you'll get a storage bag underneath the seat. Um, not all sportsmen have it, but you can add them as accessories. 
at the control center here, uh, we have a lot going on. So let's break it down quickly. So our four wheel drive switch is up on the side here. This is the trail model. So we're gonna have two different four wheel drive modes. The one with the little four wheeler going down a hill is called ADC or active descent control. So that should only be used if you're out in the mountains. It'll actually slow you down by using the front differential on these sportsmen's. For most Midwestern trail riding, you're not gonna have to deal with that. So two wheel drive and you'll switch over to four wheel drive by a click of a button there and you have to be under a certain RPM range. So you don't have to come to a complete stop, but you have to have your hand off the throttle and be coasting to a stop in order to switch it into four wheel drive. Um, and it's true four wheel drive on the Polaris's. Now throttle is right here. It's electronically controlled, so very easy to move. Um, you're not gonna get thumb fatigue while driving. Obviously the faster or the harder you push it, the faster you're gonna go with this one. On the front here, this is that battery tender port that I was talking about. It's right from the factory installed. So I recommend always keeping a battery tender on the machine if you're going to let it sit without use for, I'd say probably about a month. Otherwise the life of the battery will start to decline. Um, we have a little 12 volt accessory port right there. So you can plug in car chargers for your phone, different things like that. Handbrake up on the top, you'll squeeze it and push the lever in the back to lock your parking brake on this. And like I said before, it's operating all four wheels on this vehicle. To release it, squeeze the brake and releases quickly. Um, winch control right here, Players does a nice job with integrating it in without having a gaudy um, in and out box up here, but it's seamless right there. Um, light switch is right there. We have off, low and high. And off, it actually shuts off all the headlights, but you will have a tail light on at all times. There's no way to disable that. And a brake light if you do apply brakes. So we'll turn the key on. You're gonna notice when I turn the key on, you're gonna have Polaris scroll across the screen. You'll hear a little bit of a whining noise. That's our fuel pump. And we wanna hear that every time. There's Polaris and it already whined a little bit for us. It's just priming the fuel system on this. Um, a couple different ways we can navigate through our display cluster. Uh, the first one is clicking our little yellow Speedo override button. Um, it has a couple different features on it. So Speedo changing obviously, and then reverse override. You have a speed limiter in reverse and your four wheel drive system disengages while in reverse for safety. If you are stuck and you absolutely need four wheel drive, you have to have two hands on the handlebars to do this and you got to hold the yellow button and that'll engage your four-wheel drive in reverse and remove the speed limiter. We can go through our different trips here. Um, we can see our voltage so you can check your battery voltage while driving the machine. If we want to switch our trip and reset it, you just hold down the arrow. Reset will come and you'll go back to the double zeros. Engine hours with the little hourglass in the bottom engine service hours is at 25 engine hours. So at 25 hours, you're gonna bring it back to the dealership, get your first service taken care of. Um, they're gonna run through it really well and get it all checked out. Um, or about 250 miles, whichever comes first. Um, trip time, so we can see our trip time here. It starts counting up as soon as it's turned on with the key. Engine temperature, RPMs, miles per hour, and then back to odometer. Time is down at the bottom, fuel gauge over on the side. You can see what gear you've selected. So we're in park right now. If I squeeze the brake, um, actually there is no parking light on this one, but a clock down at the bottom so you guys can always tell what time it is. And fuel cap is right here. So I'm always gonna recommend we run non-ethanol fuel in our engines on these. So try to get that as much as you can. It's not going to hurt the engine if you have to do it a couple of times, but for longevity on the service standpoint, they are going to like premium non-ethanol fuel. If we ingest water into our clutch system somehow, either too deep of water or we have a bad seal on our clutch cover, make sure you have the engine running the whole time. The clutch spinning actually helps resist water from getting into the intake system or exhaust system, I should say, on the clutch. This little red drain plug on the bottom is if you have water in your clutches, you're able to pull that off with a little flathead screwdriver and keep the engine running. That uh, primary clutch is acting like a fan and it's pushing the water out and drying out your clutches. 
If you ever have any questions about how to break in your sportsman, you can always check out players.com. They have an owner's resource center, um, which has a lot of great information for new owners and even owners that have had four wheelers for a long time, you might learn something from there. But always refer to your owner's manual if you have questions or the player's website. Um, if that doesn't help, you can always call me in the service department and we can get you guys set up. So if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please leave a comment down in the section below. If you guys wanna see what I have in stock for my current inventory at this time, check out aplusride.com. And if you guys wanna see more videos, hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.